Today my session is uh, process management. Uh, yesterday we discussed uh, the previous class. So what is process? What is uh, process management? And uh, today I am going to discuss what is scheduler. What is schedulers programs? See, that is what is scheduler? A process migration among the various scheduling queues throughout its this lifetime. So, what what is happening in this uh, process management? So first of all, whatever program you are writing, that will save in the hard disk. And uh, after saving in the hard disk, we go for uh, execution. When you want to run the program, that time um, actually the program is available in the hard disk. So migrating the program from hard disk to RAM, RAM to your CPU, and different uh, steps involved in the execution, that is nothing but scheduling. Scheduling is a, actually scheduler is a program. What it does, it, it will schedule. It will schedule what instruction should be executed by the CPU. Suppose this is our hard disk. Hard disk. In this one, we got a program. This program should be brought into the RAM. This is our RAM. It will be brought here. From here, this is RAM is nothing but your ready queue. From ready queue, it goes to your CPU for execution. So this is so there is a program which is uh, behind this one to bring the program from hard disk to RAM, RAM to CPU, and uh, what while whatever if it is uh, if it requires any uh, IO resources that time that time again uh, it will uh, go back uh, to waiting state and all the, all these things will be done by the scheduler so a process migrates among the various scheduling queues throughout its lifetime that uh, what the, the scheduler is the program which is available in the OS it makes uh, moving the program what to be executed from the hard disk to RAM, RAM to uh, CPU, uh, vice, vice versa. The operating system must select for scheduling the scheduling process, process uh, purpose, processes from the uh, queues in the in some fashion, some orderly fashion, first instruction, uh, what are the instructions the program, one by one it will be brought to the CPU for execution. The selection process is carried out by the appropriate scheduler. So, scheduler is a program which is available in the OS. This program will be responsible to bring the um, process processes or um, um, which process should be executed first like this. So, there are different types of schedulers uh, that is short term scheduler, uh, long term scheduler and medium scheduler, medium term scheduler. We will see is one by one. So, process schedulers. So, what is short term for scheduler? Short term scheduler is also known as CPU scheduler. It selects one of the job from the ready queue and dispatches to the CPU for the execution. As I explained in the previous slide, um, this is your hard disk. In the hard disk, your program is there. So this is your hard disk. So it will be whatever program you want to execute that will be brought into the RAM. That's so. So some program responsible behind in the behind scene in the OS. So that uh, the program, the scheduler program is responsible to bring the um, our, uh, whatever program you want to execute, the job process one, each line is instruction, each line is a job. So the uh, that uh, jobs will be uploaded from hard disk to RAM, from RAM to RAM to CPU. A scheduling algorithm is used to select which jobs going to be dispatched for the execution. So we cannot send all instructions at a time to the CPU, and uh, there is a um, orderly manner. Uh, this job should be uh, the, that instruction should be sent to the CPU for execution because ultimately, ultimate, ultimately, the CPU is also responsible for the executing the program. So the instructions will be sent one by one. So the job of the first uh, short term scheduler can be very critical in the sense that it if if it selects job whose CPU burst time is very high, then all the jobs after that will have to wait the ready queue for a long time. So uh, this is a uh, very critical job in the sense the program is to, uh, this is a program available in the RAM. Now this is right RAM is also called ready queue. 
so already program has brought from the hard disk to ram this is your ram so here the cpu um, cpu is ready for the execution for any program any instruction so this is line 1 line 2 line 3 line 4 these are instructions available in the ram so now so which instruction should be sent to the cpu this is your cpu for execution so suppose if the cpu um, burst time is more than more for this this instruction and this is less for this instruction so if this instruction came came for the execution rest of the instruction will be waiting in the queue so the long time they have to wait in the queue so this is a description of the scheduler program which instruction should be sent to the cpu for execution so that is what so the job of the short term scheduler can be very critical in the sense that if the select if it selects job whose cpu burst time is very high then all the jobs after that will have to wait in the ready queue for a very long time that is a that is a disadvantage uh, so we have to write a program for this uh, the scheduler program uh, so that um, there must be some discrimination or some process some orderly fashion whose instruction is whose instruction should be sent to the microprocessor for execution so if it is waiting for a long time in the ready queue that is called this problem is called starvation which may arise uh, if the short term in the in, in the mm -hmm. short term scheduler scheduler makes some mist some mistakes while selecting the job so so this is a, a short term and this is a long term scheduler in the long term scheduler what it what is happening you can understand but uh, from this one the short term scheduler is that uh, um, moving the instructions from the ready queue that is ram to cpu so that is called uh, the some program is behind that one that program will be in the os so that is um, short term scheduler short term sh short term scheduler is a program which is responsible to move the um, processes or uh, jobs from ready queue to your cpu so the second one is a long term scheduler the long term scheduler is also known as job scheduler it chooses the processes from the pool that is your secondary memory that is our hard disk hard disk is very long from the it is it will it will be it takes some more time so from bringing the hard, uh, hard disk to your cpu directly connects not possible so so this is our hard disk and uh, the program is available in this hard disk and bringing this program which our program you want to execute from the hard disk to the ram ram that is this program bringing from this program which our program you want to execute from the hard disk to ram is responsibility of the long term scheduler so that is your secondary memory your um, hard disk is second memory secondary memory so so long term scheduler is also you know is a job scheduler it chooses the processes uh, from the hard disk that is secondary memory and keeps them in the ready queue maintained in the primary memory so bringing the programs from hard disk uh, hard disk to your ram is responsible of the long term scheduler is a program in the ways so long term scheduler maintains uh, mainly controls the degree of multi programming it uh, long term scheduler which program we want to execute a number of programs at the same time so these programs will be brought to the ram so which program should be executed that is the purpose of that is a ma ma mainly involved in the which program to execute it. that is a multi that is called multi program there will be number of programs available in the hard disk and we are bringing to the ram and which program should be will be sent for the execution that is the discrimination of the you know, cpu scheduling algorithms the purpose of long term scheduler is to choose perfect mix of io bound and uh, cpu bound processes among the job jobs present in the pool so it can, it will bring uh, uh, those programs which are uh, ready for execution so if the job scheduler chooses more io io bound processes then all of the jobs may reside in the blocked state all the time and cpu will remain idle most of the time so that is a, a discrimination of the um, job scheduler which program should be executed that will be brought in the ready queue 
So this will reduce degree of multiprogramming. The job of long term scheduler is very critical and may affect the system for a very long time. So that another one is uh, medium time scheduler. The medium term scheduler takes care of swapped out processes. If the running state, as you know, as we discussed in the previous state, uh, previous slide, that is a state of the um, states of the processes. So one process, um, uh, the new new process will come to uh, RAM from RAM to running, that is CPU, CPU. Uh, if, CPU, if the process requires some IO operations, it will go to you know, waiting state. So that is uh, we have seen the states. So uh, from waiting state to again RAM, once the IO is available, again from RAM to CPU. This is uh, locally uh, inside the local RAM and I mean between the RAM, moving the processes from the RAM to uh, ready queue, uh, ready queue to running, uh, running to waiting state. Uh, this is locally what is happening here. These are all done by the medium time scheduler, moving uh, uh, among the uh, your CPU to uh, RAM and uh, RAM to CPU. Uh, Meantime, waiting state, inter any interruption is there. That time, that process will be put in the again waiting state. So, the swapping in between among these uh, three. So, what it is, uh, if the running states process needs some IO time for the completion, then there is no, there is a need to change its state from running to waiting state. So, this will be, uh, this will be um, done by a medium time scheduler. It is a medium time scheduler as a program, uh, which is in the OS. So, it will, uh, it is a responsibility of the medium time scheduler, moving from uh, um, running state to waiting state, from waiting state to again ready, uh, ready state, ready queue. So, it, move, re, it removes the process from the running state to make room for other processes. Such processes are uh, swapped out processes and this process is called swapping. The medium time scheduler is responsible for uh, suspending and resuming the processes. So, suspended and resumed process. It reduces the degree of multiprogramming. The swapping is uh, necessary uh, to have um, perfect, uh, perfect mix of processes in the ready queue. But for, for smooth functioning of uh, smooth functioning or smooth uh, um, executing of the programs, uh, this medium term schedule is very, very much important and it will only move um, and uh, suppose some interruption has come. So suddenly that whatever running, uh, whatever program is running in the micro, microprocessor, that will be um, suspended and that will be brought, swapped out and uh, the high priority uh, job will be sent to the microprocessor for the execution. So all these things is responsibility of the medium term scheduler. And uh, the next one is the contact switch. The contact, what is contact switch? What the state, um, actually microprocessor is uh, changing its, run, always is running, it is running. But uh, switching over from one process to another process um, is the response of the contact switch. It is also a program. The contact switch is a technique or method used by the operating system to switch a process from one state to another state to execute its function using CPU in the system. Because ultimately, CPU is, the, is also a responsibility uh, to execute the program. Whereas the changing the states from one, one state to another state, so there must be somebody behind it that is your contact switch. It is a technique. When switching from, from the system, it stores the old running processes status in the, the form of visitors and assigns the CPU to new processes to execute tasks. Suppose any interrupt occurred that whatever is running in the CPU, that will be sent to the temporary register. So, so once uh, then a new, new um, process will be sent to the microprocessor, after that completion of the that processes automatically, it will switch over to where the previous job has left that is uh, where is saved in this uh, temporary list that will be resumed then so one while a new process is running in the system the previous process must wait in a ready queue that's what we are discussing whenever the interrupt occurs that will be in, um, the whatever is running in the microprocessor that will be set uh, set aside and the new process will come when new process is uh, running in the system the previous must be wait in a ready queue. So the execution of the old processor starts at the time where the other process stopped it. 
So once the microprocessor stops its uh, present running and uh, automatically um, the old one will, will resume. That is called contract switch. So we will see what is uh, prime to scheduling. Uh, what is uh, the scheduling is the process. It is a process. Uh, it is a program which uh, job should be sent for the CPU for execution. Uh, that is a program. So what is prime to scheduling? The prime to scheduling is used when a process switches from running state to ready state or from the waiting state to the ready state. Suppose uh, CPU some some operation is going under the CPU. So one once high priority job has come in the in the ready queue, then it will be forcefully stop this job and it will be sent to the wa waiting or ready queue. And then whatever is high priority, that job will be sent to the CPU for the execution. That is forcefully we are stopping this CPU operation and uh, sending the new or high priority job to the CPU for execution. This is, this is called forcefully. What is forcefully? Forcefully you are sending. Forcefully you are stopping the job of the CPU and uh, we are uh, sending other high priority job for the execution. This is called primitive scheduling. This is primitive scheduling. Primitive scheduling used when process switches from running state to ready state or from waiting state to ready, uh, ready state. So the resources uh, mainly CPU cycles are allocated to the process for a limited amount of time and then takes away and the process is again pl placed back in the ready queue if the process still has CPU burst time remaining. So once we st once you start executing one process and uh, possibly you are stopping it and we are sending um, in the waiting queue wait, waiting queue and an high priority job will come for the execution then after that after completion of the high priority job so where uh, the previous job has stopped there uh, then again that will be brought back to the cpu for execution the process stays in a ready queue till it gets the next chance to execute so this is what is a prime to scheduling so cpu scheduling decisions may take place under the following four conditions the prime to scheduling is a process forcibly we are stopping the cpu execution and we are sending the high priority job. So, what are the conditions occurs uh, when we go for the um, primitive scheduling? So, when a process switches, there are, there are four conditions. And these are conditions uh, uh, CPU scheduling decisions may take place under the following four circumstances. circumstances. When a process switches from the running state to the waiting state, for example, as a result of IO request or in a in no invocation of wait for the termination of the child process. So this is one condition. When a process switches from the running state to the ready state, for example, when a interrupt occurs, interrupt occurs. So when a process switches from the waiting state to the ready, this is another condition. State when it is changing, uh, when the uh, completion of the one uh, one one process uh, terminated, that is prime two. When process terminates, these are the conditions. At at what time this prime two scheduling algorithm? come into action. So when scheduling takes place only under circumstances of 1 and 4, we say that scheduling scheme is non non prime to or cooperate to otherwise it is prime to. So what is uh, prime to non prime to? Prime to means forcefully are stopping the CPU and we are allotting some other job and we keep this previous job in the queue. So soon after the high priority job is completed again that job will be brought into the previous job will be brought into the CPU. So preemptive means force we are stopping the CPU that present running. So what is under non what is non preemptive? Under non preemptive scheduling, once the CPU has allocated a process, the process keeps the CPU until it releases CPU either by terminating or by switching to into the waiting state. There are two conditions. Non preemptive -pre means once once running means you can stop at the CPU for the high priority job. So under non prime dates, we cannot stop until it requires it goes right, um, terminated at itself or I mean that is program executed totally or it requires some IO operations, IO inputs that variables. So in two conditions only you can st stop it. Otherwise, you cannot stop 
one of the process started in the mi microprocessor. Process start executing. So one is either terminated from the that the termination unit is output is it is executed totally and output is available. That is called terminated at its own. And second thing is it may be waiting for the inputs. That is the two conditions. And the two conditions only non um non preemptive works. So we cannot uh, stop. We cannot stop the process. So that is this is the only difference between the preemptive and non preemptive. So preemptive scheduling can result in race conditions when data are, uh, data are shared among several processes. We will look into this next slide. Consider the case of two processes that are shared data. While one process is updating their data, it is uh, preempted so that the second process can run. So the second process then tries to read the data which, I, which are is in the inconsistent state. Once one job is going on, um, the common pool is there, one process is updating the data. So uh, once the completion is over, then uh, till that time, whatever data in the second process want to read, that will be inconsistent data. You cannot, um, there will be, uh, there is not correct data. So, so what are the examples of, uh, we will see, uh, there are different types of uh, CPU scheduling algorithms are there. In this one, uh, round robin scheduling, priority scheduling and shortage job scheduling are the, are comes under the preemptive scheduling algorithms. Preemptive means forcefully we can stop the CPU and uh, we can alert the high priority job. So whenever the, this algorithm, a uh, preemptive algorithm, this is a round robin is one of the example, priority scheduling is another one of the example, shortest job first uh, scheduling, these are the scheduling algorithms uh, are available to make the smooth uh, executing of the process. So this is a dispatcher. Dispatcher is a special program which comes into play after the scheduler. This function involves the following. Scheduler is, this, this scheduler is a program. Dispatcher is also a program. These are available in the OS. They help to execute the user's programs. Switching context is a, it is a technique, but it is a, it is, it will be done by the dispatcher. Dispatcher is a program. So it is switching to, switching the user mode. So switching over user mode and kernel mode. Um, that is a program that is a, see for everything in the uh, system system cannot do anything its own for everything there will be one program behind uh, that is in the OS so whatever user wants OS knows and OS will do as for accordingly so for everything there will be a program or program some program will be available in the OS so jumping to uh, jumping to the proper location in the user program to start the program so this is also a dispatcher uh, program only it is all this uh, whatever this we are mentioning here for everything there is a program that program is available in the dispatcher so when the scheduler completes the job for selecting a process it is a dispatcher which takes the process to the desired state and queue so desire is a dispatcher is a program so it will help to place the place that uh, address the dispatcher is a module that gives process control over CPU after it has been selected short term scheduler. The dispatcher should be as, as fast as possible since it is invoked during the every process switch. The time it takes for the dispatcher to stop one process and start another process known as the dispatch latency. Because there is a gap, there, there will be fraction of um, second gap will be there um, to one process state to another process state. So that will be maintained by the dispatcher, that is la dispatch latency. So scheduling criteria. See, we have seen the different uh, types of scheduling algorithms are there. There are different CPU scheduling algorithms have been different properties and the choice of a particular algorithm may, may favor one class of process over another. So the criteria include the following, CPU utilization, CPU throughput, turnaround time, waiting time, response time. These are the, on this criteria only we design different types of scheduling, CPU scheduling algorithms. So, so the criteria including the, including the following, CPU utilization, CPU, you must, you must utilize the CPU as, as maximum as possible. Keep the CPU as big as possible. Conceptually, CPU utilization can range from 0 to 100% in real time, in real system. It should range from 40% uh, likely loaded system to 90% for a heavy, heavily loaded system. So CPU should be busy always throughout. The, what is throughput? If the CPU is busy executing processes, then work is done being done. One measure of working uh, work is the number of processes that are completed for unit unit of time. 
called throughput. So, how many jobs time can be completed in a fraction, I mean, a particular time, time of unit called throughput. For uh, long processes, uh, this rate may be may, may be one process per hour. For short transactions, it may be 10 process per second. So, this is a throughput. Throughput means the maximum output uh, taken from the CPU. Turnaround time. The interval from time of the submission of the process to this is time of the completion of the uh, completion is the turn, turnaround time. The turnaround time is the sum of the periods spent waiting for to get the memory into the memory, waiting in the ready queue, executing the CPU and doing I.O. So, this is uh, after one cycle. So, after completion of one cycle, some other process will uh, come in the one process or complete this task uh, and some other process will come into CPU. So, so, so this uh, previous uh, process will get the second time uh, turn for execution in the CPU. That is called turnaround time. So, how much time it is waiting in the waiting in the queue, um, in the memory, executing on the CPU and doing so, doing I/O operation. All this comes under turnaround. So, waiting time. The CPU scheduling algorithm doesn't uh, affect the amount of time during which a process executes or does it does the I/O. It affects only the amount of time that process spends waiting in the ready queue. Waiting time is the sum of the period spent waiting in the ready queue. This is waiting time. How much time waiting in the ready ready queue? The RAM. Response time in an uh, interactive interactive system turnaround time may not be the best criteria often a process can produce some output fairly early and can continue computing new results while previous results are being output to the user so this is a um, criteria and this criteria only will design different cpu scheduling algorithms so a scheduling, scheduling algorithm that may maximize throughput may may not be necessarily minimize turnaround time so the scheduling algorithms, there are CPU scheduling algorithms are there. There are two types that is a prim2 and a non prim2. As I explained in the previous slide, what is pre prim2 and a non prim2? CPU scheduling is a process of determining which process will own CPU for execution while another process is in hold. The main task of CPU scheduling is to make sure that whenever the CPU remains idle, the, the OS at, the, at least, at least, Select one of the processes available in the ready queue for execution. So it means that CPU should be always busy. So on the based on this one, we design, we decide, or do we design uh, the the programs, scheduling algorithms, the prim to scheduling algorithms, non prim to scheduling algorithms. In prim to scheduling uh, scheduling, the tasks are mostly assigned with their priorities. Prim to, and they assigned with their priorities. So if task is having high one one task is running. In the CPU, if I I priority task has come, then automatically um, the present running uh, process will be forcefully stopped, and a high priority job will be sent to the CPU for execution. That is called priority. It is important to run task with a high priority before another low priority task. Low priority task, even if the low priority task is still running, the forcefully that is called premature. Forcefully, you can stop the process in running in the CPU. The low priority task holds for some time and resumes when the high priority task finishes finish its execution. This is called PM2. Non, in the non pre scheduling, in this type of scheduling method, the CPU has been allocated to a specific process. It will continue till it terminates or go, go for the waiting. The pro, that is called non pre Once started means you cannot stop the CPU. CPU um, the one, one process is allocated or running in the CPU. Then we cannot stop it. The process that keeps the CPU busy will Release the CPU either by switching context or terminating. Switching context means that changing state from um, running to waiting or waiting to ready queue. So another one is the terminating. That is totally uh, executed and uh, quit the CPU once for all. That is called terminating. So these are the uh, CPU scheduling algorithms based on this one. Pre empty and non pre empty. We decide scheduling algorithms. So. Uh, we will discuss uh, the term, this set of CPU scheduling algorithms uh, in the next class. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.